Hey, welcome back Knife Nerds and Everyday Care people. It's uh, the Big Conductor here and uh, today we have got ourselves a multi-tool. Um, it's a fantastic multi-tool. It's excellent. Um, it's made by um, not Leatherman or Gerber, but it is made by some uh, people with a red flag and a great big cross on it. I'm talking of course about the uh, Swiss multi-tool here. It is actually uh, the Victorinox Swiss tool is what it's called actually here. And uh, you can see how it's got uh, the little red uh, thing right here where it says Victorinox Swiss tool. And I got to say, folks, it is a hell of a tool. <laughs> and this little finger thing here, man, is bugging me, especially when I drink some tea. I mean, I'm not uh, I'm not a teetotaler to begin with, but uh, damn it, when I'm sipping on some tea, I got this finger out. And the only thing I'm afraid of is once this thing is off, my finger's fixed, I'm going to keep on sipping tea like that for the rest of my life. Damn it. Oh, well. Um, all right, let's uh, let's go to the to the um, the good old tabletop, and we'll have a look at this. This is a this is an excellent tool. All right, so let's go to the tabletop. So, yes, what we'll end up doing is we'll have a look at kind of some of the hits and misses on here and uh, everything in between. So this is I'm going to say this is the kind of the um, the heavy duty uh, multi tool from uh, Swiss uh, Victorinox. I always want to call them Swiss from Swiss tool maker Victorinox who of course is uh, famous world famous for making the Swiss Army knife and uh, they got into the tool game quite some time ago now the like I say it's the large the frame or the, the large frame or heavy frame heavy duty multi-tool you see you've also got here the Victorinox Swiss tool spirit and you can see that it is quite a bit bigger size here too uh, as well. Now the other thing here what we'll do is we'll take a look at some of the other ones that are out there. Of course one of the most direct competitors to this uh, Victorinox Swiss tool is the Surge and you can see here this Surge here is um, you know not as tall but it is wider and it is thicker too as well. So no we're not going to do the uh, we're not going to do the um, the direct comparison between these two right now because I think that this is a great comparison to run between these two. What we're just going to do is we're just going to concentrate and look at the Swiss tool itself. And of course, another uh, multi-tool that would be kind of in there would be the free. And you can see that it has got more length than, than the free. So that just gives you an idea of kind of the, the size of this. And uh, here, I'm just going to put this other one here away. And I do apologize if I'm kind of banging on this i was hoping to have that completely isolated and it may not be but what we'll end up doing here is we'll have a quick look here we'll take this one out of here and we'll just compare these two victorinox multi-tools when they're open and then you can see here that gives you an idea of, of kind of the opening size all right and you can see that it is a true large frame multi-tool you can see that it does have some size here on the uh the, the spirit and um, so there we go. So let's uh, kind of go over the specs and kind of what I think of this fantastic tool. Now this one here, like I said, this one here I do believe is a little bit older, but it is absolutely in mint condition here. I just that's the one thing about these this uh, Victorinox Swiss tool is it is a fingerprint magnet. I love the, the the shininess on here. But this one here happens to have comes with a nice nylon case. Now I do believe right now it does come with a leather pouch. So this nylon case may have been kind of what they used to come into. And you still may be able to, I think you can also get this nylon or a very similar nylon case in the accessories right now if you don't want the leather. So far this has been excellent. I've had I've really, really enjoyed uh, this. Um, you know, carrying this on my, on my hip uh, over the last little bit, I, I think it's been a fantastic tool. So let's kind of go over some of the specs here. Uh, Victorinox Swiss tools here. All right, some of the features. So now this here is available uh, in the States. It's about 169 bucks in the US. In Canada, it is, let's just see here, it is 184. So there is a little bit of a difference here, but you know, not a tremendous, not as much as I, I kind of thought there was. Now there are <clears throat> nine different ways you can get this particular uh, multi-tool or sorry Swiss Victorinox has nine different multi-tools and this one comes in a multitude of ways so you can actually get this one here which is called the the Swiss tool um, I think it also may be called the no, no just straight the Swiss tool now there's also can be called the Swiss tool X now the X denotes that it has a pair of scissors which I didn't know that I think that's fantastic and it also comes in a black oxide 
And uh, just to give you an idea of what that black oxide uh, covering looks like, I have another one right here. And this just gives you an idea of what the, the black oxide looks like. <clears throat> it's this coating here. I'm not exactly sure how they do it. Now they say it, it adds stainlessness or anti-corrosion to the uh, tool. This is a very high chromium uh, tool, stainless steel to begin with. So I wouldn't worry too much about this rusting in any sort of form. Maybe if you're on the uh, ocean, if you're, you know, if you're a seagoing fella, you may want to look at this black oxide. But for 99% of us, I think this regular finish is going to be fantastic. Now, the black oxide version also comes with this little bit of extra here. And it's actually a cap crimper for the military. Those of you who are, you know, setting off C4 explosives or maybe even underground if you're, you know, miner. I used to be a nickel miner. I was blast certified up to 5,000 kilograms. And um, this, what you can do is use this to crimp your caps. Now, uh, I use a little bit different system, so I, that might not have worked underground for me. But hey, if you're out in Europe and you're working in underground in a mine you're, and you need to do some explosives with the military, that uh, cap crimper will uh, do it for you too as well. Although this uh, black oxide does drive up the price quite a bit. Um, here in um, just a regular, in Canada, just to have the uh, Swiss Tool BS is what it's called with uh, just the black oxide, it takes the price from 184 up to $304. So I'm not sure what the scoop is, why that's so expensive, but in Canada it's quite a bit more expensive. If I hover a look over in the uh, United States market too as well, it's a little bit more, but not quite as much of a jump. The Swiss tool here is 169. And when you get that uh, black uh, oxide coating, it's 219. And I just don't see like what is, uh, yeah, I guess who knows uh, what else it comes on. It doesn't look like it, it comes with anything else. So well, there you go. All right. So let's have a look at the uh, specs on this. Here, I'm just going to open this up here a little bit on my computer. So it does say that it comes with 24 tools and some of them are a little bit redundant too as well. Um, let's see, have a look at these specs here. Okay. So... <clears throat> The height is not quite an inch, it's 0.8 of an inch. Now the net weight though is 10.2 ounces, which is quite svelte for a full size, heavy duty, large frame multi-tool. When you're looking at the Surge, uh, and I don't want to compare it a whole lot, but the Surge is quite a bit more beefier than this. I enjoyed, even though this was a full size multi-tool, I didn't notice it as much as some of the other ones out there that was on my hip. Now I did, now the size here, any multi-tool I wear, if it's on the side of my hip, I always catch that snag no matter what it is. So I like to take mine and rather than carry it completely on the side, I like to go with the extra belt loop and kind of carry it on the back. So it's on the back part of my hip, kind of, you know, above my buttocks there. I like that a lot better. When I sit down, I slide it over to the side, but if I'm just walking around the house and going to sit down, having it on the side, I seem to catch it on so many things. Now, this is, uh, the total length here is five inches too as well. So it is kind of a fairly large size. Now it is stainless steel, but it does have so much chromium in it. That's what gives it its really, really nice shiny, shiny uh, look is the amount of chromium that's in it. So now the chromium is going to give you some, some really, really good uh, stainlessness, but it's also going to, when you have that much chromium in your blades, uh, like say your knife blades, you are going to have to uh, look at perhaps um, sharpening it a little bit more than something that doesn't have as much chromium in it. So you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna gain some stainlessness. You're gonna gain some really really good look on it, some shininess, but you're gonna lose yourself some edge um, retention with that. Now let's uh, let's kind of go over the tools here with this uh, thing. Now. The, oh, a really, really nice thing about this too as well is all your outside tools or all your tools are available from the outside in a closed position. You don't need to have that open to look at your multi, your tools. So now, of course, you've got your, uh, your, um, your main blade here. Now, your main blade here is, I do believe it's a little over under three inches, uh, three inch size. Uh, here, I've got a... Yeah, I do believe it is 2.6 inches long. So uh, it is... You know, not quite three inches. It is lockable, but it, it is very, very functional. I've had no problems, you know, cutting things with this uh, with this uh, blade whatsoever. And of course, the nice thing it is, it is lockable. You can see here. Now, the locking mechanism here is when you slide it back. There you go. Now it's locked. So what else is available on that side here is a um, wood saw 
which is an absolutely excellent wood saw. Uh, I've had no problems with the Victorinox wood saw whatsoever. It cuts like a dream. It'll go through a two by four in I'm going to say probably 20 seconds. Uh, I used the wood saw on my Victorinox Spirit to gather branches for my whittling and it's an unbelievable uh, wood saw. Uh, it's perfect uh, for this multi-tool. Have a look also in here. Now all of them here too, there's then there's a little bit of a knock here that, that the, uh, the blades here are not one-handed accessible. You need two hands on it, but um, well, hey. All right, so this is the next tool that's available here. It's actually your cap lifter or your bottle opener. You've got a large uh, flat, uh, f I think this is the five mil, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it is your uh, five mil flat, uh, look here, uh, your five mil straight screwdriver with your cap lifter. You've also got what's called the wire bender here too as well. And I'm not sure, I've never used this for kind of anything uh, for like wire bending. I know that you've got some solid strand wires out there that are, you know, if, if you need to kind of bend them just a little bit to fit in some of some of the uh, butt connectors, this is a, you know, a good way to do it. But other than that, I have not used that wire bender uh, at all on any of the time I've ever had a multi-tool or any of these the Victorinox multi-tools. Now here is one of my favorite tools right here. Uh, it is a large seven mil uh, chisel. It's also a seven mil flat uh, screwdriver you have it also comes with here and I'm just going to because I had this I oil this a little bit so there's a little bit of oil on there and I'm just going to use this here as a pointer you've also got yourself a wire stripper and a wire scraper here too as well and you've got yourself a really really nice chisel now this chisel here is actually nice and sharp so if you are going to be kind of getting into some woodworking this is a great little thing it's a great little scraper too as well so um, one of my favorite tools uh, of course so now you've also got here Reach inside here, of course, you've got your real big um, flathead right here too as well. And it is not quite thin enough to be like a real scraper, but it is a really good solid pry bar. It's got a lot of meat to it. And uh, I do believe, what is the size here? I think that is a, uh, oh, I'm not sure what the size of this is. Here, let's see if I can find it here somewhere. Uh, will it give a millimeter? I not seven millimeter. I think. I think it's bigger than the seven mil. It's 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 a it's a big a big size flathead anyway. And then we'll have a look down here. And then the final tool on this side is you have got yourself a bottle opener too as well, and along with a small uh, three mil flathead too as well. So it's not quite small enough. Maybe. You might be able to get in some glasses if you've got like a flat glass or even I would say a number two Phillips. You can kind of get in there too because it does have a little bit of uh, width to it. But uh, this is your um, can opener. Now, Victorinox can openers have been along around for a hundred plus years. And so, you know, they work. Um, and I, I can tell you, I, I have opened up using my Victorinox and using my Leatherman. One is a kind of pull in. One is a go into it and one is a go pull away from you. Um, I don't remember which it is off the top of my head, but I do know that both of them work extremely well. You're better off using a regular can opener if you've got, but if you're in a pinch and you don't have your can opener with you, definitely will work. Definitely an excellent thing. Now, another thing that people have done with this is they've actually used this as a spoon carving implement. So that they're gonna say to themselves, well, I'm not gonna use uh, this as a, uh, as a can opener for, you know, my life. I can, you know, I figure I can get into a can without it. So what they end up doing is they heat this up a little bit and they round this here. So how it is kind of straight here. They'll actually put a little bit of a bow into this. So it's a little bit bowed like this. And then they'll sharpen the heck of the end and they'll use that as a spoon carving uh, tool. And it works like a dandy, absolutely. So let's close that off and let's go to the other side. So we'll, like we say, we knock it like that and then you're good to go. Now let's start off with here on the other side, so like I said, this is the Swiss Tool, not the Swiss Tool X. The Swiss Tool comes with a serrated blade, or some people call it a wavy blade too as well. And I gotta say, it is sharp as a mofo. This is one of the sharpest tools, serrated or not serrated or straight, that I have ever come across. Well, I know on my Swiss Tool Spirit, uh, the serrated blade on that, I cut myself with it. It is so easy to cut yourself with this. It is a incredibly sharp, uh, sharp blade. Now you've also got yourself a really big, nice Phillips, 
and your Phillips here has got some good length to it too as well and it is you know it's not quite a 2d it is a 3d Phillips a true uh, 3d Phillips and it will kind of get in there with some reach which is really really nice now you've also got yourself a all here or it allows you to kind of you know go drill through some leather you can also use it to kind of drill into some wood too as well the edge here is, is sharpened on it so when you actually actually feel this you can feel that it's got an edge to it and it does work really really handy i actually had to uh put a, a new hole in my belt loop and it wasn't because i needed to extend it i actually needed to lighten the, i needed to actually cinch it up a little bit tighter and uh, so i used uh, this all through this really heavy duty leather belt i have and it worked magnificently it went through really easy and i actually just turned it around and it made a perfect little hole to it great great all i uh, wish it had the kind of the the sewing eye in it but i mean that's not the end of the world too as well all right so then you have a look here and you have another really really small uh flat headed uh blade here so this is like i think a two mil blade here so if you're this would be kind of considered your almost your eye glass um uh blade too as well and then of course finishing it up here you have got yourself a uh, uh, nail nick you have got yourself a excellent excellent file here uh victorinox makes a fantastic file so you've actually got a couple of different uh different ways here you've got a really extremely fine cross hatch here that you're going to be using you've got more of a coarse cross hatch on this side and you can feel it i mean you can feel the difference in coarseness and on the bottom you have got yourself an extremely aggressive uh metal file uh, or metal saw uh you know you're not going to use this to cut i mean <clears throat> You know reams and reams and reams of hardened steel but i mean if you have got yourself a you know you got yourself a you know a nail sticking up and you need to kind of get into it just give it a saw that'll saw through it like you know like like bob's your uncle like no problem if you got some mild steel you need to notch out hey this is going to do absolutely fantastic um you know because it is a uh it is a file a metal file here hardened metal file it will ad eventually wear and then you'll need to kind of sharpen it a little bit or perhaps get it uh, replaced uh, i'm not 100 percent sure i know that this uh, victorinox does have a lifetime warranty i just don't know whether they would consider that uh wear or if they would consider that a warrantied item but uh, i know that you can sharpen your, your files with a little bit of acid and stuff like that there is a way to do that so if you're a good file sharpener great on you if not let me know what uh, victorinox would say if you're a victorinox rep you know, definitely drop me a line or an email and let me know what uh, what would be considered as that. So let's uh, so there we have. Let's close that up a little bit. All right. So now let's open this up. So your multi tools are uh, your multi tools. Of course, it kind of wouldn't be a multi tool without a great set of pliers. And this is kind of a really really nice set of pliers. Uh, you have got yourself a really good kind of. Um, course set here to you know if you need to grab a hold of a bolt and then of course you've got some really fine uh jimping here on the inside too as well so and it, the nice thing here is you can see that it absolutely comes to a point here there's no um mismatched or anything like that so and they're solid too now let's just see here and of course look at that i plucked out a hair and i think that is if you can you know puck your eyebrows with your multi-tool pliers i think that you've done uh they've done a really really good job and um the other thing too as well is you have got yourself a set of wire cutters in here too now they say that there's regular wire cutters and there's some hardened wire cutters too as well so i i, I think that uh you know if you're going to be uh going through a whole bunch of barbed wire uh stuff like that you're better off getting yourself a good pair of side cutters or nippers or you know things that are designed because you wouldn't want to be cutting i think barbed wire with these uh these uh jaws here for you know months and months and months at a time but i mean if you're in a pinch i think they'll work absolutely fantastic and the one thing i have to say right off the bat is these here are not brand new i bought these pre-owned but they were hardly used at all and you can tell I don't see any real like kind of wear on this whole thing. So these are virtually brand new out of the out of the pouch and it is 
extremely smooth. It oh, like you, you would not get over like it. Now, um, my uh, other multi tools, uh, like my wave, is like that. But I, I used my wave for a lot of years, uh, and this here surge is a uh, fairly still new tool. I've used this quite a bit, but this is. It's no comparison how uh, how well this is broken in compared to this one. Like you can even just tell by there, just by just gravity itself. Where this one here, gravity will not move it. So that's just hats off to the the fit and finish of the uh, Victorinox product. Um, excellent, excellent, excellent. Now some of the other things here I want to mention are the fact that you have got individual springs here. Each one of your springs here are excellent, or for each one of the tools. So what that does is that allows you to open up a tool where just now that tool is the only one that's opening. You're not getting a whole bunch of tools that are opening out in a clump. It's just, I mean, the manufacturing, the excellence that went into this, that into this manufacturing is is astounding. It is fantastic. Um, uh, you know the swiss know how to build an excellent excellent tool and they've done it with this too as well you know the the manufacturing is just absolutely fantastic so now some of the other things here i forgot to mention here are the fact that you have got yourself a ruler here too as well so you've got yourself an inch here on this side and on the other side you've got centimeters so you can actually use this as a measuring tool that way and it's nice here that you can lay it flat on the ground where some of the other competitors will not. Uh, it allows you to use this as kind of a measuring tool because you can see your actual, your gradients. Now, the other thing too as well is it will um, be, I can use this as kind of a square. Now, as you can see here, it is not a true square um, because I mean, it's out just a little bit, but it just gives you an idea. If I had to kind of use this in this way or kind of, set this on a ledge and I want to measure down this way, I can do it. But I'm not going to use this as a square to uh, to build a house or anything like that. But it just gives me, I just can use it that way. So now, it's not all roses with this tool. This is an excellent multi-tool, but I think that uh, Victorinox in some of its design could have done something a little bit differently. So, you do have, yes, the Phillips uh screwdriver here too as well excellent excellent screwdriver but i don't understand why you need so many flat tools okay so you've got okay you've got this one here which is a flat two mil no problem but then you've got here let's go through the rest of these so you've got that one another flat tool it's kind of a you know a lifter a little bit of a pry bar it's you know it's kind of thick and stuff like that but then you've got another little area here where it's another little flat, which is very similar to this one here. You know, it's just a little bit, it's a little bit thicker, but why would you not use, take the opportunity to make this a different tool and maybe smooth that out a little bit or open that out a little bit. And then we've got here another one too as well. So you've got yourself a chisel, which is nice, but then you've got on your, uh, but then on your on your um, on your cap lifter or your bottle opener, you've got another flat, which is almost identical to that one. I mean, I don't understand why Victorinox felt that they had to have one, two, three, four different flat, you know, or one, two, three, four, five different flat uh, millimeter tools. I, I that kind of just drives me a little bit crazy. Like, I mean. Uh, you could maybe combine these tools there a little bit. You know, maybe take this one here and this one here, uh, this one especially. I didn't know what you could have made this tool, but perhaps maybe make this one a um, uh, an adjustable, uh, like a 2D type uh, screwdriver set. Or I, I'm just sure they could have done something a little bit differently, but I do know that no matter what, 
flat-headed screw that I own in my house, I'm pretty sure this tool will be able to open it. I just think that it's just too much. They left they left some, some functionality on the table out there. That, that's all I'm saying. Like, I love this tool. I love how sharp this is. Um, I think this one is fantastic, but perhaps why not just beef the hell up out of this one so it can be a nice good pry bar as well as a bottle opener and then take this one here and make it something else. You know, like... It's, there's an awful lot of space there. I'm sure they could have done something different with that. You know, uh, maybe make that into a little USB port. You can plug it in and, uh, you know, do your spying here with that little thing there as well. Uh, this, this, this is my opinion too there. Now, um, there we go. And the ultimate kind of rub for me, I, I think... Now, because I bought this pre-owned, I mean, I didn't have a whole lot of choice. I just wanted to get myself a Swiss tool. I just wanted to review it. I just wanted to use it uh, because, you know what? I, I'm a knife and tool guy, and uh, it, it's exciting to me. I would prefer the scissors over another serrated blade on here. Uh, uh, that's just me. On my multi-tools, the scissors are the tool that I use. Besides the main blade, is the scissors uh, are the tools that I use the most, whether it's cutting off a little thread or actually, you know, cutting things with the scissors or a little bit of cloth. That's just my opinion. I would prefer the Swiss Tool X over the Swiss Tool. All right. So now the other thing here too as well is if you have a look here, here is one of the uh, tool setups that you can get with this. And um, I think that uh, uh, although these are incredibly handy things. So you've got, see this one here. This one here um, is your accessory items. So you've got yourself an extension here. You've got yourself a ratchet. You've got yourself a little micro screwdriver, a little flathead one. Again, you've got yourself a bottle opener or sort of a, uh, a bottle opener with a corkscrew. And then you've got yourself a little ratchet with your, um, your bits. Oh, hold it on. Now this one here is supposed to be in a little slot here. This one here is around. It's supposed to have a little bit slot and it might be just so old. I don't even, that might even fit in there. I'm not hundred percent sure, but from the looks of the other ones, you can see that it's got a little bit of a slot in there. Um, I, I, I had just kind of wished that they had come out with perhaps an extender here with these little bits that you could just add on the end of your, um, on the end of your Phillips, you know? Why not get yourself a little extender? Oh, excuse me, I'm moving that out of the way there. And just kind of drop it on there, you know, over top. And then you've got yourself the ability to use a full size, quite long, regular quarter inch bit. That's just kind of, I, I wish they had thought about that just a little bit more. So it's, it is gonna lose a little bit of points to me because you don't have as much functionality as I think that you could have in such a really big, big multi-tool. Now, the other thing too, as well, is it's, it. now they say that it is kind of a little bit of a needle nose. I think it's more of a kind of a hybrid. It, it's not as needle nosy as uh, your Swiss Tool Spirit X. So you can see you've got, you can get way more into it with that. So I guess on a heavy frame multi-tool, I think I'd rather have this kind of beefy tube than rather than, than be able to kind of get into some areas. But I don't know, sometimes I wish you could really, really get closer into there with some of those, uh, some of those uh, needle nose. So now I also wanted to show here on here is this is what you can kind of get right now. This here is actually the Swiss Tool Spirit X Plus. So this gives you um, this nice black pouch that will carry all your tools plus your scissors here too as well. Don't forget that. And then you're going to get yourself the ratchet. You're going to get yourself the extender. You're going to get yourself the um, uh, little small eyeglass holder as well, uh, or so eyeglass uh, screwdriver as well as your... Uh, your bottle, your corkscrew too as well. So all that right now you can get. And that's 251 Canadian right now. And in the, the US for you folks down there who've got the really, really expensive money. Let's, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's just back that up. It is 179 bucks. So 
I think that's a hell of a savings here. That's a hell of a deal here. And you will get some incredible functionality. Uh, you'll be able to walk to anywhere in the world. And uh, I think be pretty damn, uh, pretty damn safe and pretty damn uh, functional with this tool. So would I recommend this tool? I think absolutely. A uh, couple of things here. If you're in you know, North America, uh, you have the option to get the Leatherman to deal with the Leatherman warranty and stuff like that. But uh, I got to say, most of the world doesn't live in North America and the Europeans out there, they absolutely love this tool because it is the tool that they grew up with and the warranty on it is so much nicer than having to ship around the world to, to, to the Leatherman uh, plant. And, uh, and I do believe the lifetime warranty is absolutely pretty fantastic with this too as well. Um, uh, now, I am going to come up with a kind of a head-to-head. -head. I think I'm going to take this. I'm going to go head-to-head -head with the Surge. And I'm also going to go, I think one of these days, go head-to-head -head with the uh, Swiss Tool Spirit too as well. That's a that's a great little fun thing coming up uh, pretty soon. But you know what? I'm going to give this here a probably on a scale of 1 to 10, this is going to get a 7 for me. Uh, and it's going to lose a little bit because I think the functionality of all those flatheads uh, the fact that this doesn't have scissors, I mean, that's a big thing for me. Uh, and I know it's not this tool's fault. If I had the choice, I would have bought one with tools on it. But this one, I happen to just get pre-owned and it did not have the scissors in it. So that's where it's going to lose a little bit for me. And the fact that uh, the edge holding is probably not as good, I think, as, you know, what some of the other multi-tool steels out there, like the S30V or, or C CM154, things like that. So... Oh, and the other thing it's going to lose a little bit is uh, I like the idea of having the replaceable uh, wire cutters. Now, I know that they have broken. You can see that there are pictures out there on the Internet where you've got the broken wire cutters. But there's such a, a heavy wear point that when they wear down, you're able to just take a couple of screws out, replace them, screw them back in, and you're right back to 100% functionality. I think that is a little bit more important than... Um, than having a little bit higher quality cutters themselves because no matter what quality you are eventually they're going to wear out and when they do wear out then you've lost a big functionality of this tool all right so thanks so much for stopping by i sure hope you guys appreciate this and i hope you guys uh this helps you down the road um with this now please please stay safe out there you guys we're not out of the wood out of the woods uh please keep your stick on the ice the shiny side up this is the big Knucker. sing adios